reload. 32 mind-blowing bots, survivors of the fiery, ferocious, and high-flying qualifying round now face the single elimination stage. One chance to move on, zero room for error, and everything on the line. The teams are ready, the bots are rebuilt. This is Bash Bots, the round of 32. and welcome back to bash bots i am your host the dominus ignis and this is the round of 32. the robots that have survived the qualifiers and wildcard rumbles are here tonight for the single elimination stage of the tournament no second chances and no excuses if you win you move on if you lose you go home and lose the chance to raise this trophy the giant wrench as the season three bash bots champion as per usual the remaining robots have been ranked 1 through 32 for our 32 bot bracket representing the field for this season's championship let's take a look at the seeds each quadrant of the bracket is anchored by one of the top seeds for the second year in a row, Bone Man Ace takes the number one seed, this time with his new robot Tranquilizer, after leaving his opponent in a ball of fire in his first fight. Being the number one seed doesn't mean he will have the easiest run through the bracket though, as residing in the same quadrant we can see last season's fourth place finish Tenderlove, and just above that, the deadly flipper bot Mars. Taking a look at Quad 2, the number 2 seed Amber is one of the favourites to take the giant wrench after Splugel completely dismantled Goldeneye in the qualifiers. They could be on a collision course with the number 7 seed Rookie Liberator or even the number 10 seed Vertical Spinner of Cosma. Looking into the third quadrant, the top seed is our number 3 seed Thunder Wave, coming off a successful Season 2 campaign finishing in third place. Perhaps the biggest threat to Thunder Wave in this quadrant is the number 6 seed Claymore. But not to be underestimated is the grappler bot Atlas and the two robots from a legendary rematch as Migronic takes on Firewave. The fourth quadrant holds the two Bashbots champions as Polis and Sparks take the fourth and fifth seeds respectively, undoubtedly on course to meet in the quarterfinals. There are some other familiar names in this section as Panther takes the 13th seed, Ursula takes the 12th seed, and one of the shock winners of the qualifying round, Glacier, takes the number 28 seed. We're going to get the bracket going with a fight between the number 3 seed Thunder Wave and the 30 seed Ace 5. Let's take a look at how they got to this stage of the tournament. Thunder Wave faced off against Irod and after 3 minutes of destruction won the fight with seconds to go. Nick Dusty Owl and his robot Ace 5 were matched up against Fire Wave. The fight didn't last long with the spinner getting caught in the drums and Ace 5 moved on. He will be looking to prove that win wasn't just luck by flipping the tournament on its head and taking down Thunder Wave. Let's send it down to the Dan Breaver to break down the matchup. And here we are, kicking off the round of 32 with a public execution. Thunder Wave, our third seed, performed exactly as expected in the qualifiers, tearing apart Iro to give us a victory by KO. Ounce's machine is set to blaze through this bracket. And the first victim is Nikki Dossial and Ace 5. Performing a huge upset against Firewave, Ace 5 just about shuffled into the brackets at the 13th seed with what some would say is extreme luck. To that I say, luck is just as important of a factor in a fight as skill is. But I can only go on for so long about the fight on paper. Let's just go watch this in action. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's robot fighting time! Let's bring out the bots! In the red square from the USA, 
with a chassis apparently made from a carpet tile, it's Thunder Wave! And out first, our number three seed, Thunder Wave, based on an absolutely destructive first round match and a historic series of success in previous seasons. There they are beating Irod. They've got a real underdog against them here, though. In the blue square from the USA, what happened to Ace 1, 2, 3, and 4? It's Ace 5! And here is said opponent, Ace 5, with that long lifting arm at the front. It's already beaten a wave in this competition by a wave. And here we can see that win. Didn't actually do much as Firewave got jammed up in the screws and it can press properly this time around. Okay, so I'm facing another box flipper. No more ideal of a match than my last one. But I'm still gonna try and employ the same strategy that I was using in that fight. So just try and get him to his, expose his sides as much as possible so I can tear off his wheels, his wedge, so I can get to the rest of him. So I destroy him bit by bit. Right, so the strategy for this fight is going to be a bit different from the firewood fight. So, since this has a stream mech, actually, I'm not going to try to be as aggressive as possible. I got put down even. If that feels like I just got to pull it around and just maybe run on JD, it's going to be tough. So, Ace 5, they've already overcome the fire wave. Can they deal with the thunder wave? A battle of yellow and black here on Bashbots. Thunder Wave and Ace 5 in on each other immediately here. And Ace 5 of Team Taco Hell will be looking to make it exactly that for Thunder Wave in this one. Interesting start, a couple of deflecting little blows. Yeah, certainly, maybe one too many tacos because they're quite slow out of the gate, but I mean, Ace 5 may be doing enough to arguably uphold the upper hand. They're taking the hits, but they are tanking them relatively well. Yeah, Thunder Wave hasn't really got a pure connection in so far. That's a bit better. I think one of uh, Thunder Wave's front drums just fell off there as well. Good little deflecting blow there on Ace 5, which is firing its lifter every time it gets a chance. Oh. And off goes a big, big panel. Just behind that plow yes. from the left side of Ace 5 there, and now oh, the hit no. might be tossing up a bit. Certainly, if you did not know before that Ace 5 was a four wheel driven robot, you do <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, exposed tire there oh. now. Oh, that was a shattering hit. Something else went flying off there. It was another one of Thunder Wave's front throngs, and Ace 5 has now toppled itself over again. They're all hugging around that floor flipper. They've both done well not to come worse off from that little interaction. Thunder Wave in particular, they looked like they were going to land blade first into the wall. Oh. But he goes blade first into the wall with a fantastic clash with Ace 5 there. And that's three of the four prongs now off of Thunder Wave as the pit button is now accessible and enabled. By deflecting Thunder Wave up and away there. Then it's back to the floor flipper again. We're not interested in your new pit arena hazard. We just want to throw ourselves around the box at any given opportunity. Yeah, the... As Thunder Wave it elaborates by <laughs> throwing itself off the surface of Ace 5. They're down to one fork oh. on the front now. They might lose that wedge advantage pretty soon. The weapon. Oh! Ever... Well, Ace 5 has lost all of that front protection. It's lost two wheels. And it's overturned, and with 40 odd seconds to play here, that is a massive blow to the chances of Ace 5. It's coming apart piece by piece now. And this fight, which was rather casual to start with, is now turning into a rather brutal one as our camera gets absolutely ruined there by the flying tyre of Ace 5. Oh, but it's not over yet. The wheel has actually collided with Thunder Wave's landing to upset it just a bit there. Ace 5, they are moving, oh. but they won't be moving any further. That is the final wheel, and they're still oh. taking 
some last bits of damage. They are going to be counted out here. There wasn't much time left on the match itself, but they have just barely been counted out here. Two seconds remaining. Wait! <laughs> Good last attempt there. Good win, though. Thunder Wave through. Oh, dang it. Oh, GG. I tried. So Ace Five will be wondering, maybe if I could have lasted those extra two seconds, I could have taken this one to the judges. But even then, I don't think there was much doubt. They did a little bit of damage taking those front forks off of Thunder Wave. And they certainly resisted the bar well in the opening stages. But all that damage racked up. And once Ace Five started coming apart, they really started coming apart. No wheels on your wagon. And winning by another knockout, Thunder Wave becomes the first robot to secure a spot in the round of 16 as Ace 5 will be heading home. It's time for the second fight of the night as we dive into Quadrant 1 for a battle between the 9 seed Tender Love and the 24 seed Slapshot. Let's catch up with the teams. Neroli and Tender Love faced off against R4 in the qualifiers. After a tight control battle, he eventually pushed his opponent into the pit. Slapshot's path to the round of 32 wasn't so easy. In the qualifiers, Mr. BK faced off against Moonset's deadly vertical spinner, Type 29, and took a pounding. He lost the judges' decision and had to fight in the wildcard rumbles, defeating Fatboy Tin and Monochrome to make it to this stage. In the red square, from England, it's just a box. It's Slapshot! In the blue square, from England, yellow as a sunflower, with the looks of a pair of scissors, it's tender love! Uh, my strategy for, for tender love is probably use my low clips to try and gain each on his side and control the fight as best I can. I'm really happy I get the fight again, and hopefully I can keep going from here and actually try and win something, I guess. So, BK got quite a good flip on him. I'd rather not end up booted if I can avoid it. Uh, I'm just going to hope that I can outdrive and outwedge him for the whole fight. Uh, I doubt I'll be able to get into the pit. I've proved I wasn't capable of that in the R4 fight. We'll just have to see how it goes, to be honest. Well, Tender loved the higher seed here. They did extremely well in the last season, but not too confident here. Slapshot, not the best draw for them. And away we go. Curious looking fight this one could be. Slapshot has already lost this season in the qualifying rounds, back through the Rumbles after an Uta on Monochrome. And on paper, it could give Tender Love a bit of an issue here. And the high seed has started quite well. Good response though. Ah, very good. Yes, yeah, Slapshot wanting to prove here that you don't have to be painted yellow and black to compete <laughs> in Bashbots. <laughs> Our first bit of blue in today's episode. They are underneath that wedgelet of Tenderlove, but the forks are actually wedging underneath within that. Very intriguing uh, exchange of forks and clearances, but that's a good flip as Tenderlove rolls towards the grinder, just getting away there. Yeah, Tenderlove trying to reposition. Again, it is flicked over, not flipped up. But again, turned, and there's a good oh, flick up, a great flick. Really good throw from Slapshot here. And it has started really well after taking the first attack on the chip. I almost feel like with Tenderlove, they lose that front wedge so often. Is it even worth bringing it into the arena at this point? It's actually held on for this match, but it's stopping them from getting underneath properly. Oh. But it's still a great little drifting slam into the grinder, using the floor flipper for a combo attack there. Well, it's been a very interesting fight as we reach the halfway mark of it. Slapshot again lining up through that little grate at the front of Tenderlove. 
Hit button is now enabled. Who will dare to use it here? Eva could take advantage of it. Again, Tender Love, varied design there, proving its versatility with a good little reverse into the arena wall. This time the front wedge of Tender Love is enough to get onto Slapshot. They're going for a trapping mechanism attack, but Slapshot firing straight back to say, get those forks back on the other side, please. Tender Love just honing Slapshot into that arena wall, but they know they have no way to get underneath it and complete the lift out of the arena, so they're just going to hold the pin. They can do so for a maximum of 10 seconds, then they must back away, as they have just done, straight into an attack from Slapshot. It's been a really good, close, tactical fight. You would have said that uh, for the previous 40 seconds before that attack, Kendalove had come back in again and assumed some control, but again, are these more visually pleasing Slapshot attacks is going to be enough to swing this one, maybe. Here's the long drive. Really good slam from Tendalov there. Yes, and I guess that's something you could say about Slapshot. They've made minimal use of those arena hazards. They had that one throw into the grinder in the early stages. So Tendalov a little more varied in what they're doing, but Slapshot perhaps the most dramatic attacks as we start to use even the arena spikes in Tendalov's <laughs> arsenal. This is going down to the judges, and I could not call this one. As tight and tense as it could be. There we go. What a fight. Well, only one thing calls for it here. We're going to have to look at those highlights, and I am not going to put money on any particular outcome here. There's one of the great opening flips from Slapshot, and that might well be the attack of the match throwing over the grinders and into the arena wall. But Tenderlove, you could say they may have held control for more of the match. That was a very long pin, crafted that they managed to get around the 10 second rule with two different attacks. Who's won this one? The judges results are in. We have a 23 to 22 split decision. The winner and moving on to the next round is Tenderlove. Winning on a tight judges' decision, Tenderlove moves on to the round of 16 and will face off against the winner of Mars versus Tankov. It's time for the third fight of the night as 10 seed Cosmo and the 23 seed Hospice will battle it out for a spot in the next round. Let's take a look at how these robots made it to the round of 32. Business Cat and Cosmo faced off against the full body spinner of Sea Devil. The fight didn't last long as the vertical spinner ripped off the self-writing pole and quickly flipped Sea Devil out of the arena. Hospice fought Jade in a tight control battle. After the two robots became stuck together and had to have a mid-fight unstick, it went the full distance and Hospice won the judge's decision. In the red square from the USA, the saga of the depressing name continues, it's Hospice! In the blue square from the USA, I see only grey. It's Cosmo! So my strategy against uh, Cosmo is to not get hit by his weapon and to hopefully win. I don't know how good his wedges are, but it's pretty long, so I imagine its turning circle is also long, which means I can probably get around to the sides really quickly. And then I can just chip away parts and KO it, hopefully. Robot Cosmo famously having one of the best win to loss records in Bashbot's history. Hospice hoping to join a very exclusive club of robots that can beat this thing. Another round of 32 fight underway here. And Ooh. it's an interesting first exchange here. Cosmo with a little couple of flicks with that vertical spinner. And you can see Hospice is really gangly claw at the top of its lifter here. Looking to clamp down and try and neutralize Cosmo, you'd hope, Ooh. but it's not working early on. 
And another big cliff on Hospice there. It is a miracle that they're not showing visual signs of damage. They're hanging on the arena wall. They could just about make it in, maybe. Or are they stuck between the sides of the That's wall? That's right, the two prongs here of Hospice. They've finally released themselves. But Cosmo with an absolutely devastating start here. Hospice hasn't actually really taken any visual damage on note, but oh, oh good recovery. That. That's a brilliant grab, and were this a different corner of the arena, Hospice might have been able to end it there on the spot. Instead, we're over here by the floor flipper. They're just wanting to run out the clock on as long as they can hold this grab. Of course, there is a 10 second pinning rule when you're against a wall, but if you are moving around the arena, you can hold that opponent for up to 30 seconds. And Hospice is going to use every single one of those to do what they can against one of the heavy favorites of this tournament, Cosmo. Trying to deliver Cosmo into the screws there to end its period of domination. And there goes oh, a wheel. lost a wheel. The front wheel from Hospice goes flying, and so does the whole machine. We've had a minute and a half of this one already. It's flown by, and Cosmo <laughs> is flown up and away. It's spiraling and tumbling. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, certainly, um... No idea what they were doing with that one, but now as we get into these one-to-one -one exchanges, Cosmo coming out on top more often than not. Hospice, as we see, it only needs those one little opportunities to really have an extended period of dominance, but Cosmo definitely on top at this stage of the match. Oh, and it gets worse. See that missing front right tyre. Oh, has really hurt Hospice's control and that weapon at the top has now gone from the lift to two big damage points again here for cosmo as we close in on the end of this fight yes yeah, certainly no more danger of a 30 second carry around the arena they've got to use purely the lifting mechanism to ideally get cosmo into the pit here because if this goes down to the judges i do not rate their odds at this moment in time oh! Oh, they won't word. be making it to the judges. They won't be making it back to the pits. Hospice oh. has been blown to bits. Where on earth did that come from? Oh, my Here's this little memory of Hospice back when it existed. They had this great little period at one point, giving us hope that Cosmo, one of those really strong competitors in Bashbot, might have been facing an upset. But as soon as they found their momentum, we lost wheels, we lost the top of the lifter, and then we lost, well, just about everything. Who blows up a hospice? Winning by utter destruction! Cosmo secures their spot in the round of 16, and Hospice will be going home in a bin bag. Before the final fight of the night, we're going to show you how four more teams made it into the next round. First up was the number one seed Tranquilizer and the 32 seed Hondatron. While Adrian and Hondatron seemed to have the lower wedge, they couldn't carry the momentum from their first Bashbots win and were quickly disposed of by the vertical spinner. A brutal victory from our number one seed. Next up, it was a battle between the 8 and 25 seeds as Robo Bowler and his Flipperbot Mars faced off against Famo and his deadly horizontal spar spinner, Tankoff. Mars came out aggressive and had no trouble tanking the hits from the spinner, flipping it around as Tankoff struggled to self right. Mars is tanking these shots right now. Mars took the opportunity to flip it out of the arena. The third fight saw fan favourite Panther take on the wild card of Cyberstorm. Keo decided to bring out one of Panther's alternate setups, replacing one of the spinning bars with a lifter. It didn't matter to Cyberstorm though, as Panther was flipped out of the arena almost as quickly as the fight started. Huge redemption here for Cyberstorm. The final fight saw the tri-bar spinner of Ursula take on the heavily armoured wildcard of Sucker Punch. Showing excellent driving skills, Bandit was able to angle the wedge perfectly to deflect Ursula on almost every hit, with the tri-bar not being able to find a purchase on it. Sucker Punch taking blow after blow here. The fight ended up going the distance and Sucker Punch took the decision, pulling off the upset. It's time for the fourth and final fight of the night. It's a battle between the 16 and 17 seeds as Type 29 and Ryu Kishin enter the box. Let's catch up with the teams after their qualifying round fights. 
Type 29 faced off against Slapshot. After three minutes of consistently out wedging the flipper and tossing it into the air, Moonset took the judges' decision. Ryukishin faced off against Sucker Punch in the first fight of the season and in an excellent driving battle ended up just about taking the judges' decision. Coming into this fight, Tyrus has attached some extra forks to the front of his wedge in a hope to get underneath Type 29. Let's send it down to our match analyst to break down the fight. Ah, uh, the spinner versus non-spinner. A classic matchup that I'm certainly not getting bored of anytime soon. Like most fights, this is all set to be decided by who gets under the other the most, but Virus knows this all too well. Slapping a wedge on the front of Ryu Kinshin, this robot is more than ready to take on Moonset and Type 29. But the spinner has faced similar ish robots and it's performed fairly well when it did so. So it's very hard to nail this one down on paper. So, you know what has to be said, right? Let's get down to the arena. In the red square from Germany, it's a very own remote controlled wasp nest. It's Ryu Kenshin! And out first in this 16 versus 17 matchup, we have the 17th seed Ryu Kishin representing Germany. They've added an extra wedgelet to the front of their robot to help get under Type 29. In the blue square from China, try remembering the number of last year's one without looking it up. It's Type 29! And here is the German's opponent. The Chinese machine, Type 29, the 16th seed as we know has beaten Slapshot in the qualifiers to reach this stage. And here it is doing so, a nice spiralling flick into the air. What can it do in the round of 32? Let's find out, here on Bashbot. Um, well, this time I'm aiming for driving my robot, uh, like moving it forward, uh, steer it around the arena and maybe attack the opponent, and we will see how it will work out. And that's it. <laughs> Well, on paper, this is supposed to be our closest match of the night. The 16th seed takes on the 17th seed, but that spinner of Type 29 so frightening there. Away we go, Ryuka Shin charging across the arena and getting knocked over immediately by Type 29's devilish looking vertical bar. Mmm, that's right, they even added those two front wedgelets specifically for the sake of getting underneath Type 29, but as you say, one of them's gone and the other <laughs> the other one hasn't been working Whoa! from the outset. Oh, <laughs> that didn't get grinded off, but that's the most we life we've ever seen out of those arena hazards. Hear the whirring of Type 29 out there now, and another spiralling tumble through the air for Ryuka Shin. It's had a bit of a sobering start to this fight. What can it do to get at that vertical spinner? That's a good thrust forward. They definitely have some kind of answer. Oh, oh but it doesn't last too long there. Type 29 with a little flick at the side there of Ryuka Shin, which is rather exposed. Type 29 there temporarily oh. and maybe permanently in trouble here against the wall, maybe suspended and dropped back down. That is danger. Oh. Type 29 so large, so hard to dispose of. I'm surprised to see them seeded this low, to be oh. honest, because that is another devilish slam and Ryukashin is bouncing all over the place. How much punishment can Ryukashin take here? Goes for a bit of a opportunistic thrust forward there without any connection. Type 29 trying to turn that weapon into Ryukashin again. Doing the turn again as the pit enable. And once again, the arena soars. <laughs> Just want to make themselves known. Uh, Ryukashin rightfully going for the pit. We haven't seen too much of that this season so far, but this is an example of a machine where they need that control to deal with that frightening vertical spinner. And they're doing a lot better than they were at the start with another fantastic flip. Yeah, is Ryu Christian starting to get some momentum here? As you can see, one of its entire wheel support brackets on the right side was ripped away in an earlier exchange there. And a couple 
Oh, oh! You can't even keep up with this devastating impact that Type 29 can dish out at times. Ryu Kashima is still soldiering on, but goodness me, damage points are all going to one corner here! Yes, this final minute was absolutely going to be critical. Should this come to the judges, but frankly, this final minute has been all Type 29 so far. Things are only getting worse for Ryu Kashin. <laughs> but that's a very tricky little drive from upside down to get away then. Ryu Kashin has been brave, but with 19, 18 seconds to go, oh! can we see something miraculous? Maybe. Type 29 now back on its wheels there. Ryu Kashin darts across the arena that takes more punishment. It really has been an effort of immense proportions from Ryu Kashin. But it will go the distance with a lot of damage sustained. Oh, they almost managed to angle Type 29 to the pit right in the dying seconds. But this will go to the judges. And suddenly, I can only see this going one way. That opening exchange told you a lot. Those opening, those new wedgelets that were added to Ryu Kashin just didn't work out completely. They got better as it went along. That shot as they tried to get Type 29 over the arena wall really could have swung it, but such a huge machine hung on in there. They ripped the top ribs off of Ryu Kashin, and on damage, they're the heavy favorites now. The results from the judges are in. We have a unanimous decision. The winner is Type 29. Just scraping by on the decision, Type 29 moves on to the round of 16 to face the number one seed Tranquilizer as Ryu Kishin heads home. The round of 16 is taking shape as half of the slots have now been filled. Eight robots moved on tonight and eight were sent home. Things are heating up, but that's all from us tonight. We thank you so much for watching and we hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next time when the round of 32 will conclude. Until then, good night. Next time on BashBots. The round of 32 concludes. The champion steps back into the box. High-flying rookies look to take the next step to glory. And a rematch. Two years in the making. It's all coming up next time on Bash Bots. Oh!